Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This is my top 10 stocks as we head into Monday, January 8th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Real quick, one clarification before I get started, I will be using the 30 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one here, ticker symbol BNZI. And very, very nice move here today. Uh, big gap up. And then from there, the price really did a good job of just, uh, you know, finding itself and, you know, pulling back a little bit, but never crashed or anything like that, which is always a good sign when a price can, you know, make a move and then, you know, not, you know, give back everything or anything crazy like that. And what's interesting about this pullback area was how it came down and has now, you know, stopped right around. Let's get this mapped out here, actually. This former breakout area never hit it exactly, but got relatively close. So let me change that to green to represent a support moving forward. But you can see back here, this was a free, uh, previous area of resistance right there. And then just basic technical analysis when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, you want to see them act as support. So that puts the level right there at $2.20. So never quite hit it, but got right there. Got generally close before starting to head back up. So while that doesn't guarantee anything, it does now make it a little bit more plausible to throw out the question of, okay, is this pullback over? Is this thing getting ready? to head back up in the upwards direction. Again, no guarantees, but certainly a much more plausible situation as opposed to let's say the price was just still dropping, dropping, dropping. I'm sitting here saying, hey, it's looking like the price might be getting trying to curl back upwards. You'd say, wait, what, what are you talking about? Based on what the price is literally dropping straight down. But this is not the case, right? The case is that the price leveled off and is now starting to head back upwards. If the price does try to make a move in the you know upwards direction, main area of resistance at this point gonna be right up here around this kind of congestion point up around, let me change that to red for resistance, right around three dollars and 25 cents but all in all nice move today a bit of a pullback but now starting to curl back upwards so we'll see how it continues to play out next week next one here sgd and i'm going to go very quickly through this one because very similar concept to what i just talked about so very nice move up the price did pull back sure but you can see has leveled out and is now starting to head back up so a little same exact question is this thing done pulling back? Is this thing starting to curl back upwards? And like I said, same overall idea there. I mean, just to maybe, I guess, put a little twist on it. I'll draw this very crudely. You could call this a nice bull pennant pattern with really the price potentially breaking out through the bull pennant, which just adds that much more credence to the whole idea of, is this the start of something even bigger? So like I said, I want to respect your time and not sit here like a broken record. So big, same idea, move up pulled back, starting to curl back upwards. I, I Actually, I should map out this point because this is a, a relatively important area right there because you can see the price bounce off that area. So from a support standpoint, right there, $1.85, going to be a very important level. Uh, but other than that, same general idea. Next one here, ticker symbol AIMD. And once again, same general idea. Although this one hasn't necessarily curled upwards like the other ones, but what's interesting in this situation is check out how the price is pulled right back to that pink line right there and now started to go sideways at it. That pink line represents the very famous, the very well-known 200 per and moving average. Whoops, and even if you have a basic understanding of charts, so there we go right there. That is an area where I'm sure you've heard of it. And you know, it's one of those things where even if you want to just call it a self-filling prophecy, Prices really do tend to, uh, you know, respect that. And we have a perfect example of that right here where the price went down there and then just started to go sideways at that level. So as I've said, there are no guarantees, but does it become plausible now to throw out the question of, okay, is this pullback finally over? Has this pullback found some sideways or some support right there? Because it has started to go sideways. Like I said in the first one, if the price just dropped straight down through it, it'd make no sense for me to be saying, hey, maybe this is some sort of bottom because the price would have, you know, just completely destroyed it. But that's not the case there. It has started to go sideways at that level. So is this the, you know, is this pullback over? Is this thing ready to show some signs of strength again, which it showed very much so today? Uh, you know, that becomes a very valid question given the price did respect that 200 period moving average. So if you like these sorts of price range and you like these pullbacks, certainly keep an eye on it. Next one, M-A-R-A. -A. And speaking of that 200 period moving average, this is exactly what I mean in terms of it, you know, just being one of those levels that the price really respects. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. Check it out. There's the pink line. And then you come down and you can see, I mean, if you were picture the price action as a surfer and that pink line as the wave, look at the beautiful job that the price did of surfing right along that wave there. So a classic example of that 200 period, uh, you know, behaving how you'd want to see it behave. So moving forward, uh, you know, needless to say, uh, that 200 period moving average is going to be the ideal level of support. I Meaning if you're to ask, you know, what's going to make this chart look the absolute strongest going forward? Certainly if the price continues to hold above that uh, pink line there, which again, did a fantastic job of doing today. In terms of areas of resistance, 
main level here now moving forward in the very near term. Gonna be right there at that kind of top part of this consolidation here, right around twenty-four dollars and forty cents. I'll change that to red for resistance, and then add in one more, just in case there's a bigger move with that next key level being up there, right around twenty-six seventy-five. But all things considered, and I should just give a little bit bigger context. You can see overall still very much so in an upwards trend, uh, but in the near term, as we're seeing here, you can see it's got some resistance levels to, to break through. But so far, so good in regards to that two hundred period moving average. Next one here, AMC, and once again, lower lows. Uh, what I don't know, maybe I'm trying to fit a square peg through a round hole. Maybe I'm trying to you know, be a little too optimistic. But to be fair, at least in this situation, there was a bit of an uptrend line that did form. So after the nasty opening 30 minutes right here, you can see that after the price bottomed out right there, uh, the price did start to work its way upwards and never put in any more lower lows, uh, which did give me the ability to draw in there, you know, that uptrending trend line. Again, I completely understand, Clay. Little too optimistic. All this thing does is go down, and fair enough. I'm not going to push too much against that. Uh, but you also got to acknowledge that, yeah, it maybe just maybe is some sort of bottom finally in. It finally just started to go sideways a bit. Yes, there's more work that needs to be done, but I don't think it's too far fetched to suggest that maybe this thing is going to get some sort of, even if it's just a dead cat bounce uh, move next week. And if that does occur, then the main area of resistance keep a close eye on right here at $5.30. If anything, I mean, I suppose you could call this a bit of an ascending triangle pattern here. You got the resistance you got the support right there so does this thing chop around and then get a move back to the upwards direction we'll see what happens with it next week real quick want to take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online web class that i'm offering next week so if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool and how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk then definitely get signed up for the free live class if you're watching on youtube there's a link down in the description box or if you're watching at my site there's an area right there on the web page you can click to get signed up so like i said if you've been enjoying then definitely get signed up for the free class Next one here, ticker symbol PTON. Should have put this at a different location in the list because I already talked about this. So I'm once again, going to go through it relatively quickly. You can see here, very strong start, then pulled back, but the pullback has leveled out and now the price has started to curl back upwards. So yes, you guessed it. We're going to throw out that question. Is this pullback over? Is this thing going to return back to those highs and potentially continue with the uptrend? We already had that once here. Nice move up, bit of a pullback, and then up it went, bit of a pullback, up it went, bit of a pullback. So like I said, is history going to repeat itself? We'll see what happens. So I'm not going to you know, beat that dead horse anymore. You've already heard me talk about this general idea. So if you like this sort of situation, you like stocks down below $10, definitely keep an eye on it. Next one here, TSLA Tesla. And I think the level that everybody and their brother's uncle is going to be watching next week, including myself, is right down there at let's call it 236 $236 and 30 cents. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. Look at the number of times the price came down there, respected it. Brief break below, but then quickly snap back up. So after that, and then this afternoon, respected a couple candles in a row. So yes, there's going to be all sorts of people. Some people th think are going to be thinking rightfully so. Does this thing come down there and get a bounce? I can see where they're coming from. Other people, the bears are going to be saying, you know, if this thing breaks, I can see it really opening up momentum to the downside. And those people are also right. Those people are also looking at things from a valid standpoint. And that's why risk management matters because somebody's going to be right. Somebody's going to be wrong. But the common theme here is that everybody and their brother's uncle, at least in my opinion, is going to be focused on that $236.30 mark. So definitely keep an eye on that, especially if you like. Oh, there we go. Uh, keep an eye on that moving forward. In terms of areas of resistance, I think pretty straightforward here. You have the purple line up there, that 50 period moving average, which is sloping downwards and, and is going to get more and more relevant as next week plays out. So keep an eye on that on any attempted bounce. But yeah, 236.30, can it hold? We'll see what happens. Next one here, PLTR, very nice bounce in the upwards direction. Uh, started off with a rough gap down, but then after that, from where it opened to where it closed, yeah, nice movement, but that does lead to the question of, you know, is there any sort of genuine power behind that movement? And I have no idea, but we can make answering that question very straightforward. And in my mind, it all revolves around this level here at 1585. And the reason for that is hopefully we can all agree on the logic that price movements with genuine strength are going to progress forward. They're not going to go back to where they were. So in other words, if the price were to come down to this area and then just continue on down, what is that doing to the price? That would quite literally be putting the price right back to where it started. And I mean, like I said, not to insult your intelligence, but that's not exactly a sign of genuine strength. You're going to want to see prices show progress. And in this situation, let's say the price comes down here, but instead bounces around and then heads back upwards. Well, now all of a sudden, what do you have? Well, you'd have a set of lows right here. You'd have that low down there. And if you envision each one of those as stair steps, now you have stair steps making progress in the upwards direction. And again, that's what a truly strong move is all about. So did today's bounce, is it the start of something bigger? Is there genuine power behind it? Let's see if it can make progress. 
And again, progress being defined as staying above 1585. Next one here, ticker symbol NIO. And I don't know. You can let me know in the comment section. Am I trying to fit a square peg the round hole? But for some reason, I really like that trend line right there. I can see that trend line playing a role moving forward. I mean, it's already respected the price a couple of times. So we look right there and then you look right there. So I don't think I'm being too far-fetched. Again, feel free to disagree. Let me know in the comment section. But I don't, I don't think it's it's too crazy to think that the price could come down there and then get some sort of bounce in the upwards direction, especially when I add in the other side of the equation, which is this area of resistance right here, which is showing a falling wedge pattern, which is actually a bullish pattern. Um, a little counterintuitive, but falling wedges are bullish patterns. And I think that's what we have in place here. Uh, so like I said, all, as always, you are more than welcome to disagree with me down in the comment section. Uh, love to hear other opinions, but I don't think I'm too crazy to call this a falling wedge pattern. So if you like the falling wedge as a pattern, you like stocks down below $10, definitely keep an eye on it. Next one here, ticker symbol TQQQ, which is an ETF that measures the NASDAQ market. So if you believe the NASDAQ market is going to rise, this one will also rise and it makes it a very popular ETF. Now I am going to be a little bit more firmer in this one because this is this is a falling wedge. Um, I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it as I sit here. Oops. That out of the way. Let's try that again. These things are getting in the way. There we go. But as I draw this in here, change that to green. I mean, that's a good solid down sloping uh, tread line right there. And then as far as the resistance is concerned, downwards angle like that resistance. So I would definitely classify this as a falling wedge pattern. Um, and, you know, sure on NIO, maybe I was trying to fit a square peg through a round hole. But on this one, I like it quite a bit. Uh, and that's really just the, the big question is, does the NASDAQ get some sort of rebound next week? This pattern here suggests that it's got a good chance. Now, am I saying that it's going to, you know, blast back above into the 50s? I'm not saying that. But, I mean, could it get some sort of worthwhile move where it maybe goes up there and retest the 200-period moving average? I don't think that's out of the realm of possibilities because there's no doubt about it. The NASDAQ has really been beat down over the past few days. And things that get beat down, even if it's just a dead cat bounce, there can be some pretty significant moves to the upwards direction. And then you throw into the mix that this does have a falling wedge pattern on it. And in my mind, I can see some sort of, you know, rebound, even if it's just temporary next week on the NASDAQ or specifically here on TQQQ. So that wraps up the top 10 list. Again, if you like what you saw here and you want to learn more about the tool, then get signed up for the free class next week. It'll be Thursday, January 11th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. As far as the top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy these, if you'd like for me to continue to do them, do a couple things for me, please. Hit that like button, leave a comment below. Say hi, tell me what you traded uh, today, tell me what you're watching next week, and I really do appreciate it. So hit that like button, leave a comment down below. Go get signed up for that free class. Everybody take care, have a good one, and enjoy your weekend.